Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at some traditional options trades. We're going to look at uh, each one of these kinds of trades and we're going to kind of look at what the liabilities, uh, the pluses and minuses of each of the trades and we're going to keep the liabilities of each of these trades in the back of our mind and then we're going to over the course of the next videos explain how our strategy handles these liabilities. So let's get started. First we'll try and attack long options. So we'll open up option view and we will for this example we'll use a at the money call option and we'll go look at the risk graph. So on the risk graph we can see a typical long option is right here at the money where it sits today and if it goes up we can see each of the timelines that there's a potential here to make some profit if we can get the stock to move in this direction to the right or up in price. So the problem often with uh, long options is people end up getting the direction right in other words the market moves slightly in their direction this way but you can see at expiration can maybe draw that on there real quick. We can see at expiration we're still below the zero line. We still don't have a profit. Even though this, the market has moved, the underlying market has moved our direction. To get a profit at expiration we have to go way over into this area over in here. Oftentimes that's uh, fairly difficult for people to do. Let's go ahead and uh, you don't need to, to know um, much about how to do this but let's go ahead and put some standard deviations on the chart and we can see that the one standard deviation of movement is between these two ranges. Let me draw it on there for you so you can see it better. Between here and here is where approximately 68 percent of the time uh, the market will end up falling somewhere in that range. So we can see that our uh, profit area right here is certainly achievable, but equally as achievable is the movement in this direction. The nice thing about a long call is that we have a fixed risk. We only are going to possibly lose this much money in exchange for making, you know, possibly unlimited profits. So that's pretty much a long call. Uh, long put would just be in the opposite direction. Now, one of the things I want to look at here is when we're long options to look and see how volatility up in this corner over here I'm going to change the volatility and see what happens. First let's try a minus 10 and we can see that even if the market didn't move anywhere we'll move this bar out of the way so even if the move it, market didn't move anywhere from here stayed right there but when we had this drop in volatility all of a sudden we lost we started losing money even though the market didn't go one direction or another so that's how a drop in volatility affects this option the opposite if we get an increase in volatility all of a sudden without the market moving anywhere uh, all of a sudden we're starting to make money right up here so implied volatility if it goes down it hurts long options and if it goes up it helps long options so the next trade we want to try is the short options. So let's go take a look at that. Instead of buying an at the money option, let's sell an out of, out of the money option and take a look at that risk graph. Now we bought a little bit out of the money so we've given ourselves a little bit more of a buffer in this area here. We, we now have basically the opposite situation of our call if if the market doesn't go or excuse me the opposite of our long call if the market doesn't go up in this direction more than this amount we have this whole area of profit in here and all the way down in this direction we're making money however this is the one standard deviation move over here so we can see that the loss area is, is certainly a possible outcome and we're in addition to that, we have possibly unlimited risk in this trade 
for a very small possible profit in comparison to the potential uh, loss. So uh, that's our short option. Now let's see what happens if we change the implied volatility. If, since this is a short option, we'd expect it to behave the opposite of a long option, which is true. If we go down in volatility 10%, we can see that it helps our trade. So without the market moving anywhere in price from here, we've now got a bump in price when implied volatility goes down. That's because the option's worth less now than the credit that we got, and we can buy it back cheaper than the credit that we took. Now, if the implied volatility goes the other direction, it goes up, our profit point goes down. So without the market going anywhere, we've now uh, lost money on this trade. So to recap, uh, on the long option, implied volatility going down will hurt it. Implied volatility going down helps short option. Uh, implied volatility going up hurts this, this short option here, but it helps the long option because it inflates the price of the option. So if we bought it for a particular price, we're hoping that we can sell it for more. And with the inflation from implied volatility on the long option, we're making money. So let's look at the next trade. The next trade we want to look at is a credit spread. So let's take a look. In this situation, we'll stick with our short option we have there, but what we'll do is we'll add a long option, a long call option, a little bit further out of the money. The at the money is right here, so we're moving a little bit further out of the money to buy an option. So let's take a look at what that risk graph looks like. So it kind of looks like the short option. Generally speaking, the area of profit got eaten up a little bit. It's not quite as long or as wide but we still have this unlimited area of profitability. Of course, just like the short option, we have a limited profit potential, but one of the things, nice things that we've done is we've, we've limited our potential risk. That's what the, the extra long call does for the short option. So we've got a fixed risk and a fixed potential profit. Now the, the risk is still $560 in this case versus like four, you know, 25 or something like that. So our risk is still greater than our potential profit, but not by a lot. So this is a, you know, kind of a reasonable trade. Our standard deviation area is somewhere from here to here. So we can expect most of the time, most of the activity will fall at expiration somewhere in here. But it looks kind of like the potential area of loss is smaller than the potential area of profit, which is good. So now let's look, take a look at what implied volatility does for this trade. One of the benefits you get from having a long option and a short option on at the same time is that they kind of balance the implied volatility risk from each other. In other words, if implied volatility goes down, it hurts the long option, but it helps the short option and vice versa. If implied volatility goes up, it helps the long option but hurts the short option. Basically, the implied volatility should be muted to some extent. So let's see what happens. So if I put in minus 10, you can see that we do get a, um, some movement. The profit from no market move goes up a little bit. So we're on balance because our short option is closer to the money or at the money uh, than our long option, it benefits a little bit more then the long option is hurt by the declining volatility. So let's let's try the other direction and see if we implied volatility goes up. Again, it does have an effect to some degree, but you can see it's it's pretty muted. This is not a lot of effect. Now the reason the movement here is so much smaller than the other direction is that essentially the implied volatility going up is helping our long option, which is further out of the money and it's hurting our short option to some extent as well. So on balance for a credit spread, implied volatility going up doesn't hurt as much as implied volatility going down helps. Hopefully that made sense. So let's take a look at the uh, next trade. Next trade is, we'll go back to our PowerPoint, 
is the debit spread, which is kind of the opposite of the credit spread. You'll see in a minute. So instead of selling the just out of the money option, we're going to buy the just out of the money option, and we're going to sell uh, the further out of the money option. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So it's kind of the, basically the same thing, but going a different direction. The big difference is the way people trade these is that our price that we start at is outside of our profit area, whereas in the credit spread, usually the price is starting inside the profit area. So we actually need some movement in this direction to get into the profit zone. Now the difference is, one of the differences is kind of the opposite of what we did, which kind of makes sense because we just kind of flipped the minus and plus signs. Our potential profit is greater than our potential loss and pretty much on the same magnitude as the credit spread. So our potential profit in this direction is greater than our potential loss in this direction. But the reason we're getting that extra possible profit is because we're taking a little bit more risk because we're starting off uh, outside the profit zone whereas the credit spread starts inside the profit zone in the market doesn't really reward you for doing that. It, the market rewards us for taking a little, this little extra risk. So let's take a look at what implied volatility does to this trade. Again it's going to be a little bit muted because you, you've got a long option and a, a short option except if you remember implied volatility going up didn't hurt quite as much as implied volatility going down helped our credit spread. So I think we should expect to see the, the opposite here. So if implied volatility goes down in this case it kind of hurts our trade. So let's go ahead and draw that on there. So we got, there's our price at the moment. So without the market moving anywhere, a drop in implied volatility does hurt our trade a bit. And again, this is pretty much a directional trade. So we're not trading this to benefit off implied volatility. Same way with the credit spread. It's really a directional trade. So let's go ahead and see what implied volatility going up does. So it, it doesn't have much of an effect at all. Again, very similar to what happened with the credit spread. So that's the debit spread. And let's move on to the next trade, which is an iron condor. The iron condor is a very popular trade, mainly because people think of it as a limited risk trade, plus it has a high probability usually. So that's why people like it. And the way they normally structure this is something like usually what they'll do is start with the standard deviation range and they'll try to pick something out here. I don't know if we'll get away with this. Uh, and then they buy an option out even further out of the money than their short option. And we're right at the one standard deviation range here. So this is pretty much like our credit spread we did earlier. In fact, an iron condor is really basically two credit spreads. So let's try, we have one credit spread on the puts and one credit spread on the uh, calls. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. Now it looks like a pretty reasonable trade. If we take a look at the probability of profit, it's around 66%, which seems pretty good. Our range of profitability is somewhere in here. And if we start off in this trade at the zero day, we can see that any movement to one side or the other starts getting us a, a loss pretty quickly. But if we can hold on and maintain, uh, we start getting a nice bubble in our profitability uh, zone about you know the 15 day mark halfway to expiration and at expiration we have a pretty wide profit area which is why we have a 66 percent probability of profit but as we talked in one of the earlier videos the chances of us hitting our short strikes here is about 70 percent chance also our potential profit on this trade is right in this area let's say call it three hundred dollars and our risk is seven hundred dollars so our risk is much more than our profit potential so let's take a look and see what implied volatility does to this trade we kind of expect it to be a little bit muted kind of like it was in our credit spread example but we've got two credit spreads one on the puts and one on the calls so let's see what happens if implied volatility goes down it very much helps our trade because our the center point of our trade are two short options and applied volatility going down helps those short options 
So uh, that's our primary. Uh, they're going to benefit the most from the implied volatility going down. If the implied volatility goes up, again, you can see that it, it definitely hurt our trade. So in the zero day line, simply if the market went nowhere but implied volatility went down, we'd be losing money right out of the gate. Again, like we talked about in the earlier video, this is a directional trade. As soon as direction starts going out here, you can see we're losing money, even at the zero implied volatility. Let's, let's put it back there and see. Even at the uh, zero implied volatility, we're starting to lose money in this area out here, even at the uh, halfway mark. So those are the points at which we end up adjusting this trade usually. And again, as we talked earlier, that's going to change the probabilities. So let's look at the next trade type. It's the calendar spread. So for, let's get rid of this the shaded area and we'll get rid of the opening trades. So the calendar spread is usually done either at the money or slightly out of the money. And we sell one of the current month options like this and we buy a further out month option. So let's think about this before we go look at it. Remember implied volatility going up hurts our short option helps our long option. So we, we've got a lot more juice out here. We've got a lot more time value. $29.30 versus $19.70. We've got a lot more time value out here in this long option than we do in the uh, short option. Therefore if the implied volatility goes up it's going to help this part of our trade much more than it's going to help this part. If applied volatility goes down, it's going to hurt this position, the long position, because it's got a lot more time premium than the short position. So applied volatility is going to have an uh, unequal effect on these two options. So let's take a look at it and see what that does as a practical matter. It has it as it starts out. It has a very good looking uh, graph. The let's draw it up here now. The profit potential is somewhat on the same order as our risk. Uh, the risk is fairly gradual uh, drop off. So it's a pretty good trade as it starts out. However, let's see what implied volatility does to this trade. If implied volatility goes down, all of a sudden we basically have a really tiny window of opportunity to make a profit. Now if implied volatility goes up, you look like a genius because we have a huge area of profitability. I've never found a real good way to predict implied volatility. If you could, these are the kind of trades that you'd want to do. The other thing to mention here is that most of the approaches to trading calendar spreads that I've seen usually try to find a month where the implied volatility is very high in the near month and very low in the back month. That makes your initial risk graph look really good. However, the reason that the implied volatility is usually high in the front month is because something is afoot, either earnings or something like that. The market is thinking there's a lot more risk in the front month than there is in the back month. And therefore we end up with a very high probability that we're going to have a big move. And we can see that a big move in a calendar spread in either direction would hurt this trade. We don't want it to move too far out this way or this way. So. I think that that strategy, while very popular, is very much in error, uh, and you should should never try and sell a high volatility month against a low volatility back month because uh, you risk the big move. Uh, you really want the implied volatilities in the front month and the back month to be very close, and that gives you a much better chance of actually ending up in the profit zone. So let's look at our next trade. Let's go look at the butterfly, the regular butterfly first. The way people normally do that is they'll do they'll sell two options in the middle and then buy wings on the same type of option. So in this case, calls minus two calls out the money, buy one call just out of the money, and then buy one call just in the money, and that gives us a risk graph that looks something like this. Uh, we have a fairly narrow profit zone. However, the profit zone is pretty big when compared to our losses we have this potential profit up here around eight hundred dollars for a potential risk of eighty dollars that's why these are attractive the problem is is that our 
window of opportunity, you know, down the road 30 days is very narrow. So if you not only have to predict uh, the price where the stock's going to end up, but you have to pr predict it 30 days out. And if you can do that, you're highly rewarded for it. It's a, it's a, a nice trade from a risk point of view, but probability is very low, 14%. So let's take a look and see what implied volatility does to this trade. If it goes down, uh, it helps our trade a bit, but we don't really get the big bang until the end of the trade. Probability goes up. We ends up hurting our trade, but it's a little muted because we have such little risk on this trade, and we have so much time premium in the short options, but very much guarded. Our risk is very much guarded by those long options that are very close on either side. So a little bit muted. Our next trade is the iron butterfly. So let's go take a look at that one. It's very similar to the regular butterfly except that what we do is we do kind of like the iron condor we do a credit spread at the money in the same month. So we go minus one call at 730 and then we're gonna take our other leg and move it up here. So we basically have a credit spread with a wide leg and then uh, on the put side we're going to do pretty much the same thing we're going to buy or sell one right at the money and then we're going to buy one a few strikes out so let's take a look and see what this looks like this is a pretty decent looking trade the profit area is somewhere in here so around thirty two hundred dollars the risk is somewhere around looks like about eighteen nineteen hundred dollars so it has a fairly nice looking risk graph we have this area uh, 15 days out in the middle it starts to balloon up that provides us a nice profit opportunity uh, but let's see what implied volatility does to this trade if implied volatility goes down it helps our trade enormously we get this big ballooning in the center area and uh, that'd be a good time to possibly take some profit if the implied volatility goes up it does have an effect on the trade but again like the other butterflies it's it's fairly muted it, it it doesn't have a really dramatic effect on the trade and if time is on our side we can still end up getting some time decay in this area so back to normal and that's it for our traditional trades uh, that we wanted to take a look at all right coming up next we're going to talk about the rules